Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate a triple integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the triple integral of the region E, which is going to be found by taking the triple integral of the function 6xy. We've also been told that this region E, this volume, lies underneath this plane z equals 1 plus x plus y, but also above the region that's bounded by these three functions, y equals the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 1. So with a triple integral problem like this, what we're going to want to do, essentially, is turn this triple integral problem into a triple iterated integral problem. We need to find limits of integration for x, y, and z. We need to choose our order of integration if we're going to integrate first with respect to x, then y, then z, or z, then y, then x, or what our order of integration is going to be. So we've got a little bit of work to do. The first thing I like to do with a problem like this, where I have some region that lies underneath the plane but above another region, Whatever it says above the region bounded by it, I like to graph those three functions. Notice that these three functions are going to be all defined in the xy plane, the plane that we're used to, a two-dimensional plane, as opposed to a three-dimensional coordinate system where we have x, y, and z. So I can just graph those three functions here on an xy coordinate system, which is going to make it easier for me to visualize what I'm doing here. So let's pretend that this is x equals 1. And this is y equals 1. We've got y here and x here. We'll leave y equals the square root of x for later because it's the most difficult out of the three. y equals 0 we know is just this line here. y equals 0 along the x-axis. We know that we have the line x equals 1, which is just going to be this line right here x equals 1, and then we have y equals the square root of x. And if we just plug in a couple numbers, what we realize is that that curve looks like this approximately. This is not a good representation, but approximately it looks like that. It's going to curve out this way like that. So we have this region in the xy coordinate system, and what we want to imagine is that this is basically the base of our volume. It's the bottom of our three-dimensional shape. And that shape rises out from this base up along the z-axis. So it's going to sit on top of this region here, but it's going to be underneath this plane, z equals 1 plus x plus y. So we have to find the volume that is housed inside of this region here, rising up from this region all the way up until it hits this plane, z equals 1 plus x plus y. Well, here's how we're going to do that. First of all, let's start with our limits of integration. Our limits of integration for x and y we can find from this drawing that we did in the xy coordinate plane. We can see that this bounded region is only going to be right here, right? So our limits of integration for x, the lowest value that x attains on this bounded region here is at 0. The largest value it attains is 1. Those are our limits of integration for x. So x is going to be from 0 to 1. y, you can see that its lower limit of integration is going to be 0, right? We have the line y equals 0 here. That's the lowest value that it will attain. The highest value it'll attain is 1, but it depends on which x value we're plugging in, right? Because if we're right here at x, then the y value is this spot right here. If we're right here for x, then the y value is this spot right here. So the y value is going to depend on the function y equals the square root of x. That's how we're going to find the upper limit of integration for y. It's going to be dictated by this function, square root of x, here. So what we say is that our upper limit of integration for y is square root of x, like that. For z, our limits of integration for z, if you imagine we have some third z-axis, and let's say it's this is not going to be a good drawing, but if you can imagine that it's coming vertically out from the x and y-axis, it's rising up in a vertical direction above these two, our limits of integration for z, they're going to start at 0, because we're talking about a value for z here of 0, and then it comes up and maybe the value up here is 1 or whatever. But our base here is in the xy coordinate system. The bottom of the volume is in the xy coordinate system where the value of z is 0. So our limits of integration for z, we're going to start at 0. Now our upper limit of integration for z, again, is going to be dictated by this function here for z. But the height is going to be dictated here by this function again. So this is going to be our upper limit of integration for z, 1 plus x plus y. 
So those are our limits of integration. Now we just need to figure out the order of integration. Which variable do we integrate with respect to first? Which variable do we integrate with respect to last? Well, the dead giveaway is if we have limits of integration that are both constant, right? Our limits of integration for x are zero and one. Two constant numbers, no variables involved. Whereas the limits of integration for y, we've got this variable involved here, x. Limits of integration for z, we've got two variables involved here. Whichever variable has the constant limits of integration, that's gonna be the last variable that we integrate with respect to. When we look at y and z here, our limits of integration for y have one variable involved. Our limits of integration for z have two variables involved. Because z has the most variables involved in its limits of integration, that means that we should put it first. So our order of integration is going to be the one with two variables involved, then the one with one variable involved, then the one with zero variables involved. So our order of integration is going to be one, two, three, in decreasing order of the number of variables involved in the limits of integration. So what that means, if we go ahead and write out our integral, our outer integral here is gonna be limits of integration with respect to x because x is going last. So we'll go ahead and say zero and one. Our second integral is gonna be with respect to y, that's going second, and our limits of integration are zero and square root x. Our first integral, the one we're gonna integrate with respect to first, limits of integration are zero and then one plus x plus y. We're gonna be integrating six x, y, the original function we were given there, and now we just have to match up our dx, dy, and dz. Well, because limits of integration for z are on the inside, that means dz goes first, then come our limits of integration for y, we're working from the inside out. So limits of integration for y, then we say dy, and on the outside, limits of integration for x, so we put dx on the outside here. So it's just like a sandwich. The z's go on the inside, then the y's, then the x's are on the outside. Now we have our integral set up and we just need to get going on the integration. So we're gonna integrate first with respect to z because we've got dz here on the inside. When we integrate with respect to z, we're treating x and y as constants. So essentially we have six times a constant times another constant. We just have another constant here. It's as if we were just integrating a number like three or five or whatever, and there was no z variable involved. In that case, we just add on a z. So our integral here is just gonna be six x y z. That's the integral of this with respect to z. And we're gonna be evaluating that on the interval zero to one plus x plus y. It's important here though, that we say z equals zero and z equals one plus x plus y because we just integrated with respect to z. We need to make sure that we plug in these limits of integration for z, not for y or x. So it's really important to write z equals or y equals or x equals, whatever you just took the integral with respect to. We're gonna leave our integral here for y and for x out in front, and we're gonna leave dy and dx behind here because we still have to take the integral with respect to y and then x. So here, plugging in our limits of integration for z, we're gonna get the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to square root of x. When we plug in one plus x plus y, we'll get six x y times one plus x plus y, like this, and then dy dx. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. Well, obviously when we plug in zero, we're just gonna get zero for the entire function here. So we don't really need to write an additional, you know, minus zero. We'll just go ahead and leave that out. When we distribute the six xy across the one plus x plus y to simplify this, we'll get six xy because six xy times one is just six xy. 6xy times x is going to give us plus 6x squared y. Then multiplying 6xy times y gives us plus 6xy squared. And then we have our dy dx here. So we'll just basically substitute that in for what we had. That's our simplified integral. Now we need to go ahead and integrate with respect to y because y is the next variable here and we have our limits of integration on the inside here for y. So integrating with respect to y will leave this integral for x and now we'll say that our integral is going to be 
x, y squared. y to the first plus one gives us y squared. Then we divide by the new exponent. Six divided by two is three, so that's how we get that. Then here for six x squared y, again, we'll just add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, so we'll end up with plus three x squared y squared. Then here for six x y squared, we'll add one to the exponent to get three. Divide by three gives us plus two x y cubed. We're gonna be evaluating that on the interval y equals zero to y equals square root x, and we're gonna be plugging in zero and square root x for y. When we do that, we'll get zero to one here. We plug in our upper limit of integration first, square root of x. We get three x square root of x squared is just gonna give us another x, so x times another x gives us x squared there. Same thing here, we'll put in square root of x, square root of x squared gives us another x, so instead of 3x squared, we end up with 3x cubed. Then here, square root of x cubed is gonna give us x times square root of x, multiplied by another x gives us x squared square root of x, but that's really just x squared times x to the one half, like this, when we add those exponents together, we get x to the two and a half or x to the five halves. So we'll just say plus two x to the five halves power like this. Then we're gonna subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. But of course, when we plug in zero for y, each term here is just gonna become zero. So there's no sense writing a minus zero. And we just have our dx here. This is really as simplified as we can get, so now we're gonna integrate with respect to x. When we do that, our integral is gonna be x cubed. We divide by that three, so the three is gonna go away. We're just left with x cubed. We'll get x to the fourth here, so that means we'll get three fourths x to the four. Here we add one to the exponent, five halves plus one. In other words, five halves plus two over two gives us seven halves, so we get plus x to the seven halves. When we divide two by seven halves, that's the same thing as saying two multiplied by two over seven, or four sevenths, like this. So we get four sevenths x to the seven halves, and we're gonna be evaluating that on the interval x equals zero to x equals one. When we plug in x equals one here, one cubed gives us one. One to the fourth gives us one times three fourths is just three fourths. One to the seven halves is still one multiplied by four sevenths is four sevenths. No need to plug in zero because each term will just become zero. So now we just need to find a common denominator. We can get a common denominator of 28 because four times seven here is 28. So let's call this 28 over 28. We replace the one with that. Multiply three fourths times seven over seven and we'll get 21 over 28 then multiply four sevenths by four over four, and we'll get 16 over 28. When we simplify that, we get 28 plus 21 plus 16, which is just 65 over 28. And we can't simplify that any further, so we call that our final answer. That is the value of the triple integral of this region E that lies under this plane, but above the region bounded by these three curves.